the big calls on all those big races. And boy, have we got some big races coming up for you this weekend on What A Shout, the Racing Post flagship weekend feature show. Myself, Dave Orton, thrilled to be back in the seat, summer in the capital, on a Friday morning. We film for you out there. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, like and subscribe on YouTube, anything on Facebook, get involved. We love to read the comments and hashtag What A Shout, brought to you by our sponsors, Bet365. Whew. So, Haydock Lancashire Oaks up there, an old Newton Cup, and what a card at Sandown. So much said about the Eclipse, of course, the feature race at 3.35. Small field, but some absolute worldies in there. We'll be finding out what the panellists make of that and trying to tip you the winner. Before that, let's introduce them. He's back the bear. Graham Robway, assistant betting editor of the Racing Post. How are we? Yeah, I'm great. Yeah, I'm really excited to be back, Dave. Feels like ages since I've been in, but it's not that long, is it, really? It's only a couple of weeks since Roy Ascot. Yeah, well, it's a little while since you've done a water shout, mm. um, but it's great to have you on. It's always Yeah, a we're bit right in the meat of the summer, aren't we? We've got, like, um, the eclipse tomorrow, and then we've got the um, July meeting, Super Saturday next week. We're going to Fantastic be covering a lot of that. Weeks yeah, ago. it's it's a heavy time, isn't it? And with the consistent weather, this is a great time to be a punter, isn't it? Oh yeah, we we thought there might be a bit of rain over over the week uh, for these weekend's features, but it stayed pretty dry, hasn't it, Dave? Yeah, it has, and like we saw at Royal Ascot, <coughs> when the sun's out and it's consistent weather, that's when you can have a pop, isn't it? Let's go to Stoke then. Now he's not in his usual situation. Is our Pat Cooney? Yes. Uh, good morning. Yes, we've got the decorators in at the moment, so. Uh, I've been relegated to the spare room, and uh, I, I know the spare room very well over the years from the scenes. <laughs> and relegation being a Stoke fan, of course, absolutely. <laughs> Pat, it's great to have you with us. Of course, you're sponsoring a lot of the Haydock card, another juicy weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we've got the maximum field in the old Newton Cup, which we'll come on to. And uh, just on weather watch, really, the, the ground there at the moment is supposed to be soft, good to soft in places, but it does dry out very quickly. So keep, just keep an eye on those weather bulletins for the next couple of hours. Great stuff. Let's have a look at exactly what we've got coming up for you on this weekend's What A Shout. We go into Carlberg Stables. Classic winning trainer Roger Varian joins us back on the show. An unmissable segment with Roger coming up, trust me. And then we'll be giving you five big race previews on the Saturday. Absolute meat on the bone there before the all-important weekend winners. Well, as promised, let's zoom into Carlberg Stables then. Classic winning trainer Roger Varian joins us back on the line. Roger, welcome back to What a Shout. Yeah, good to be here. Thanks for having me. 55 winners up for the year. A couple of tasty winners this week as well, Roger. I thought that winner at Thirsk, by the way, looks a bit... looks a bit uh, useful. Up at, um, at, uh, in the Sheevely Park colours uh, the other day. Yeah, Julia Augusta... Um... I have to be patient with her. She's took a while to come to hand this year, but she's she's a winner of both of her starts now, and she looks nice. And hopefully, she can have a fruitful second half of a campaign. With a filly like that, Roger, would you be now? You know, we we pinned it down. I think an RPR of ninety six, and uh, she shows that she can mix it on turf. Shows that she can go from the front. Is it black type? Is that the mission with a filly like this? I think ultimately it is, um, you know, with a lot of these fillies, that's uh, you know that's priority if they're if they're good enough. But it's it's often how you get, how you get to, you know, how you get there, and you know if you jump straight in or if you try and uh, get a bit more experience. And mm. a lot depends on a program book, uh, you know, what's around the corner. And um, I think she's a field probably. Uh, sorry, I think she's a filly probably to keep it one mile for now. And um, you know we've got to see how the handicapper assesses that, what mark he gives her on Tuesday, and if we maybe have a run in the handicap before before going up in grade or, or whether we jump straight in. Uh, I, I'm not sure quite which route we'll go with this filly, but I think she's promising. Yeah. And um, hopefully, she's, hopefully she's up to that level at some point. The analysis department was, was debating whether that would be high-end handicap or, uh, or black type. And I'm not sure you've answered it either way for us. Actually. Roger, so it shows you how difficult it is, viewers out there. Yeah. Let's have a look at your yeah. big winners so far then in 2022. And here they are, Eldar Eldarov. Let's start with him at the top. Uh, on the score sheet at Royal Ascot, very well back winner of the Queen's Vars. Not a race I would associate necessarily with you, Roger. This chap has done absolutely nothing wrong, of course. And uh, he, he he sort of won despite a pace bias there, didn't he? Yeah, I think he did very well to win. And, uh, of course, it was tight uh, tight on the line. I thought we were the wrong side of a bob, but just, uh, just a, a, a millimetre or whatever it was in front... Um, 
so we're delighted with a horse, delighted to get on the scoreboard at, at Royal Ascot. And um, I thought it was a very good performance. I thought, you know, he looks like a horse who's going to stay, stay very well. But I thought he had to show a, a degree of pace as well to, to make up the ground in the straight. And, um, you know, you'd have to say the second probably got a, a better passage than we did and, and, you know, hit the front full of running. And I think, I think credit to our horse, he's had to make up, a, you know, a fair amount of ground and see the trip out. So, you know, he's, he's obviously highly capable and highly promising. And with only three runs under his belt so far, I think his best days are ahead of him still. Uh, of course, uh, quotes uh, for the St. Ledger obviously coming in uh, there, Roger. I suppose it would be a trip to Goodwood or York next for him, would it, for the trial? Yeah, I'm not sure, um, Dave, to be honest. it's uh, The Vars is, was upgraded a couple of years ago and is a Group 2 now. So, you know, we've got penalties to think about. And um, uh, we, we'll have to see. He, he's come out of a race very well. He, he looks better now than he did uh, pre-Ascot. So I think his condition is ripe. Um, he is. Uh, he does hold an entry in the Grand Prix de Paris um, in the middle of July on, on Bastille Day, of course. And I thought the Goodwood Cup, with all the allowances for a three-year-old, might be something um, to consider as well. Um, there are the two races we've got on our mind at the moment. Of course, there's a, a three-year-old race over a mile and a half at Goodwood, which is a Group 3, he'd carry a penalty in. You know, we put him in the Voltager, which closed this week as well. So, you know, he's got options. Um, we'll have to try and uh, feel our way over the next couple of weeks and see what feels right. But he's in great form, and I think he's got a big future. Well, isn't that interesting? Then the world, the oyster, then for Eldar, Elderov. Uh, tricky to say, but not tricky to follow, that's for sure. A couple of other horses on that list. Royal Champion is one that I'd like to ask you about, Roger. Now, David Baxter, who now works for you, former Racing Post employee, we do a live show here in this studio on the Saturday, race reactions and all that, and there's a guy called Tom Park, who is the editor of our weeklies, and he was in here, and he's, he's very good friends over d backs and he said, I've just had a text from, from d backs and he said that this has got a stone in hand when he made his reappearance at Doncaster. It's fair to say there were some long faces of our viewers <laughs> and here on the panel and then of course he rocks up at Epsom a derby weekend most people you know thinking oh I'm not sure about this chap and he absolutely hosed up how is he first and foremost I imagine he's been a horse to keep difficult you know just as one piece as a unit hasn't he yeah he's a horse you know we, we've always held in high regard and as a three-year-old he was highly tried I think he ran him a field in stakes and a dante stakes before having a a setback which kept him off uh, off games for the, the rest of his three-year-old career. But he, he ran reasonably well in the field and he was very disappointed in the Dante and um, wasn't uh, quite living up to our expectations. We came back at Doncaster for the mile listed on, uh, on uh, Lincoln Day um, way back in March this year. Again, expecting a big performance. His work had been very good. And, you know, he was beaten at halfway. Um, it was really a, a head scratcher, I guess. But um, we took the decision to geld him. And that's, you know, whatever was, was going on downstairs or upstairs uh, seemed to have been ironed out for, for the gelding operation. And, you know, you never, when they've run poorly three times in a row, albeit, you know, under mitigating circumstances, you're, you want to see it on the track in the afternoon before you really believe the engine is there because, of course, it's not just about how well they work in the mornings, it's about what they do in the afternoons. But we, we thought he was well capable of a, of a performance he put in at Epsom, but we had to see it first uh, to really believe it, and of course we did, and, and I'm hoping he's a horse who can go on and on now. Yeah, you would imagine so. It's interesting, isn't it? When it's too bad uh, to be true, like that was at Doncaster, it's almost like when a horse finishes third or fourth and they're beaten a length or two and you think, well, maybe that's how good they are. At least you knew it was too bad to be true. Let's go and geld him and on he goes. Well, we're always looking for future stars from you, Roger. And Aidan is one chap I'd like to ask you about, of course. We saw him burst onto the scene at Newmarket and then he had a hold-up. Yeah, he's... Um... He's on his way back now. Um, obviously, we had to sit out uh, the derby at Epsom, but he'd looked highly progressive and, and very promising before that, winning the field and stakes like a really good horse and, and sort of confirming that run in the guineas. I thought his, his fourth in a very strong guineas was, you know, was a great, uh, a great run. Um, he could uh, be ready to go again in August. Uh, we haven't uh, quite nailed down which race uh, will we reintroduce him 
in, but uh, he's training nicely again now. He's he's a he's a great big horse. He's another one you'd have to hope his best days are still ahead of him. And um, we're really excited about him for the second half of the year. Yeah, that Guinea's form doesn't look bad now, does it at all? Might get a further boost this weekend as well. Talking about this weekend, the last horse on the list of your big winners, of course, the scu it was the Scurry Stakes, was Mitt Bahi, who goes back to Sandown for the Coral Charge. That's 150 there, the first week, uh, race of a big weekend there at Sandown. How is he, first and foremost? Must be happy that you're drawn low. Again, n not a big feel, Roger, but you want to be near the fence, don't you? Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky track, uh, the five at Sandown. Um, he's in great form. He's training well. Obviously, um, course and distance winner. He seems to go on any ground. So he's, uh, you know, he's a progressive um, sprinter. We, we like him a lot. He's drawn stool one. You know, hopefully that shouldn't be a problem for him. I, I think when the ground is good, good to firm as it's forecast to be, I don't think the, the draw is such a, a key thing on the sprint course at Ascot, I think. On slower ground, it, it perhaps is, um, but uh, we'll have to see. You know, he's a horse who who, who is generally um, to be most effective delivered quite late in his races. So uh, you know, it might be that we need a little bit of luck at some point in running. But um, he's a strong traveller, you know, who can really quicken. And um, looking forward to running him tomorrow and to see what he can offer for the rest of the season as well. Yeah, you got the right man on board in David Egan there, of course be looking for a confidence booth in Mishrif coming up in the Coral Eclipse. Just a quick word on the Eclipse, uh, Roger. Uh, it looks like a serious race, doesn't it? Does one catch your eye on that? Yeah, it's a really uh, select field, isn't it? Um, wish we were involved, but uh, can't wait to watch it. It's just one of those uh, one of those very good races, I think. Um, could make a case for, for any of them. I like Native Trail, I think. And, um, I would go with him, perhaps. You'll be looking for an Aiden boost from him. I like it. These trainers are all the same. Let's go up to Haydock, shall we? Because at the 240, the Lancashire Oaks. Now, you throw us a bit of curveball here. Believe in love, of course. And uh, Eshada were both on the list of your big horses. Um, and Believe in Love has shown her true colours. Now, Eshada, not quite so, Roger, but that was your Group 1 on Champions Day last year. And I remember speaking to you last year and talking about your strike rates and how they're always really strong. And you said, it's the Group 1s that we want. She got you over the line. She did, um, she did, and uh, we're looking forward to running her tomorrow. She's in great form. Um, she loves a bit of dig in the ground, and of course they've had some rain at Haydock, so conditions, uh, you know, should be very suitable for Ishada. Um You know, I wouldn't worry about her comeback run at Newbury earlier in the year. Um, you know, she was a bit rusty on, on that occasion. The ground is a little bit tight. Uh, I think she probably needed a run. Jim gave her a very sympathetic ride and, you know, she came on uh, markedly for that run. So I should think you'll see um, Ishada bounce back with a really strong performance tomorrow. Um, I think it's a, a strong renewal of the Lancashire Oaks. It's always a good race, but this year looks particularly strong. And um, Believe in Love is uh, no mug either. You know, she's, a, a, I think, a three-time Group 3 winner now. She's been Group 1 placed. She was only just beaten ahead in the, the Royal Oo, um Group 1 on Arc Weekend last weekend. She she likes a bit of cut in the ground as well. And, um, you know, I should think on, on, on most years renewal, she wouldn't be a 10 to 1 shot. She'd be a bit shorter. But I think that's testament to how strong the race is tomorrow. But both fillies go to the race in good form and hopefully we'll both run with great credit. Yeah, it'd be very interesting to see Ashada back in um, a race with some cut. And I agree, it was it was eye-catching, I think. Some people were disappointed by it, but if you knew the filly, and Jim was sympathetic, uh, behind Il Arab, of course, that was, and the ill-fated scope, unfortunately, we heard that news this week, uh, that he's no longer with us. It, it's a strong race, that. I think she's going to be a massive player there. Another one that will like the rain, your final runner on Saturday, is a horse called Do a Spree. Um, I think, at, at Leicester last time, you said that the ground wasn't ideal. Gets it today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to running him with cut in the ground. He's, he, I wouldn't say he's been disappointed, but he hasn't quite done what I, I hope uh, he's capable of. I really think he needs uh, juice in the ground. He's going to get that tomorrow. I hope he's versatile coming back to seven furlongs, obviously a mile last time. But I think seven a mile um, soft ground should be, should be right up his street and hopefully, hopefully he can get his head in front tomorrow.
Yeah, he's bred to be better than his mark, isn't he? Now, Roger, I'm looking for a nap later on in this show when I've got some, some buffoons coming in and joining me on the panel. Should I be looking at him? <laughs> That's enough said. Sometimes silence says everything, especially from Roger Varian. Roger, it's been great to have you. Thanks for you and the team for sorting this out for us. It's always a pleasure to have you here on What A Shout. From all of us, all the best this weekend and for the rest of 2022. Thanks very much. Well, wasn't that an absolute pleasure for you? He always just gives you the right line. You always sense with Roger. He has a very good think about before he answers something like a, from a buffoon like me. And uh, you wouldn't have heard the nap there. You, you didn't hear that, did you? So a do a spree in the last, by the way. Wink, wink was a nod, nod. Lovely to have silence from Roger there because it means he fancies it. And good to get a line on one of your horses to take out the Royal Ascot meeting. Yeah, Eldar Eldarov. Yeah, he's, uh, he's very <laughs> impressive, wasn't he? When he won you it nailed Ascot. that. Did I? Yeah. I don't rough them now, those sorts of names, do I? Know? But um, what I was impressed about was that I, we had a bit of a disagreement, me and the analysis lads, because uh, I think someone wrote that they went pretty fast, but I don't think they went that hard at all. And Eldor, Mark Eldor, Brown is one right of the now. better judges in Ooh. the Racing Post, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. But I think that Elder Eldorov did well to come from off the pace in that race because I don't think there was much of it. And uh, he came from right at the back, didn't he? Really yeah. quickened up well. I think he's a good also Elder Eldorov. But... Um, yeah, not sure about the Goodwood Cup, though, Dave. Ooh, that's juicy, we've seen, isn't it? We've just seen Trusham win off a mark of 10, st off 10 stone 8 in the Northumberland Plate, giving lumps of weight to him. Not said about that in the week. People saying, hang on, wobble your heads, calm down, everyone. It was a terrible race and all that sort of stuff. That was a bit harsh, wasn't it? Well, I don't think it was that bad a race. Spirit Mixer's been improving rapidly this season. That was a career best for Spirit Mixer in second, just by a pound. Let's just get this out of the way. Despite the fact you've had a pop at Connections and not running on on good ground before, you do love the horse, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah, I think he's the best in the division. Been saying it for the last two or three years. Even when Stradivarius when he's in his pomp, I've been saying that wait till Trushan gets hold of him and we'll see how good Stradivarius is nowadays. And once Trushan did get hold of him last year, he, he beat him up a couple of times, didn't he? And um, they're really good this season, even better this season. Because first time out, he beat Crickfall, didn't he? Yeah. Giving Quick form loads of weight. Quick form horses, yeah. came out and won a sand down the Henry the, the whatever it's called. Henry the Eighth, of Is course. It, I always call it the Henry the Second. <laughs> Roman numerals. They're very yeah, tricky I'll on these lost. live TV shows. Doesn't take much to confuse me, Dave. <laughs> no, I know it doesn't. Absolutely not. And uh, Pat, just a final word for you on the Roger Varian stable. Then punter friendly. Oh, absolutely. And when you look at his uh, win to runner strike rate over the last five years, he runs at twenty percent, which is really, really impressive stuff. Given that he has runners at the main meetings. And put it this way, if he is a runner in a handicap, you know, the Hunt Cup, the Bunbury Cup, those sort of races, one of his runners is almost certain to head the market. There's a lot of respect for him, uh, both sides of the fence, really, punter and uh, odds compiling. There you go, quite right. So really nice to have Roger on. Big thanks to him and his team again for that. And we got the scoop, Eldar Eldorov. If he goes Goodwood Cup, do you fancy him? Let us know below. Here we go, Saturday's Big Race Previews, five coming your way, starting at the... 205, it's the bet 365, mile six handicap, Pat Cooney. And uh, Smart Prescott got a runner here. Yeah, C King is the name of the fella, and he's uh, currently he's around about a three to one favourite at the moment. He has got top weight to carry. He was very impressive on his uh, seasonal reappearance at the end of April. He did go up nine pounds, so the handicapper saw him that day. But, you know, I don't know if we're overcomplicating this. We've seen this film before with some Art Prescott progressive horses going up in trip, lightly raced. And I just presume seeking, I think he'll be very much uh, the warm order in this race tomorrow. As I say, the step up in trip, he wasn't stopping at uh, Doncaster last time. We've seen it so many times over the years, haven't we? I think Sir Mark thinks he's a, he's, a, he's a good horse, and I think he'll have a good autumn, and I expect him to go very close today. Others that we've laid in the race were well, Nathaniel Green with the first time cheek pieces for William Haggis. Any Haggis runner is going to be popular this weekend after the form they're in over the last couple of days. But I say, I think we're overcomplicating this. I think Sea King is definitely the one to be on here. All right, then. Making some waves. Some Mark Prescott, you get the feeling that uh, his team are just about to bounce into action, but I won't be having him at that price. This is a trial, isn't it? Or if you like, oh, I shouldn't say a trial. This is a stepping stone for Keith's race, isn't it, at the, at the Ebor meeting, the Mel Rose. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's going to win? Yeah, I don't know why we have to have a Mel Rose handicap. <laughs> we can petition it for Rob yeah, Way, that's very, fine. It's very dull, isn't it? Um, I think the Favre win. I'm with, I'm with Pat. Yeah, I think that the horse um, is, is improving rapidly. Last time out, when he won over a mile and a half, it went really, really slow, and he hammered them from three furlongs out. He was far, far quicker than them. To be able to quick up, quicken up in such a good uh, fashion after going so slowly, I thought just marked him down as all that was well ahead of his mark. Obviously, going up in trips, and Mark Prescott will improve. 
boring day, but I know, but I think the father will win. See, I call, almost called him C Moon, C King. C King, all right. Um, I'm going to take him on. I think you can have two stabs here. I've got Nathaniel Green on top, guys, actually. When he won at Chepstow, he beat also called a Giro, who ran a blinder in the Duke of Edinburgh at, uh, at Royal Ascot. He then moved up in trip at Musselburgh. Terrible run there. And at Goodwood last time, he was coming with a wet sail. I think the cheap pieces will help. Kieran Fallon Did you see Mark Wand? I did. And, uh, and Haggis. At Haydock. That was remarkable on Thursday. It was like reeling them off one after the other. He was unlucky not to make it five and five. Yeah, it was incredible. And when they do hit these hot runs, Haggis runners, they do just keep reeling off winners, don't they? Yeah. But um, hopefully he's had his winners for the week. And Double Cherry is the other one to look at for Tom Ward, who's having a great year with Jim Crowley on. So there you go. That is the uh, the 205. What are we doing next, guys? Where are we going? It is, of course, the Lancashire Oaks 240. How can I forget that? Now, we've heard from Roger Varian here, Pat. Uh, Ashada, you feel, is sitting on a real big performance this Saturday, but she's not fav. No, favourite at the moment is free win. Now, the last time we saw a free win for John Gosden, uh, she was winning the Park Hill Stakes. So that was a long time ago, but... Uh, as we saw at Royal Ascot with Inspire, it doesn't really make that much of a difference with the top stables coming here on their first run of the year. But that being said, I think she'll be relatively easy to back free win because we haven't seen her. And Ashada does bring that group class soft ground form to the table. I'm not sure how soft it will be, but I'm sure there'll be the word soft somewhere in the going description to start the morning off. And if she comes back to that Ascot win at the back end of the year, she's going to be bang there. And we've been betting on this race all week, of course, and the money filly has been stay alert. Huey Morrison and good to see Josephine Gordon ride in in a race like this. That continues to be popular since the overnight stages as well. That's around about eight to one, having been 14, 12 and 10. Not really a three-year-old's race, though, on the stats. So uh, I'm going to want to Eshada. If Roger Varian's uh, optimistic, then uh, then I'm going to be as well. Yeah, absolutely, Pat. I think uh, Free Wind is probably still a horse to be with going forward, but she's going to have to be a... Absolute A game to beat Ashard. And it wasn't a bad comeback run. You heard me talking to Roger about that. Uh, that was behind El Arab and the ill fated Scope. Uh, bad news in the week, wasn't it? Mm, Scope, yeah. Real yeah. blow. Yeah, it was a I thought shame. Rafe Beckett spoke very well about that because it must have been a hammer blow. Um, really, really sad I was about that. Um, but Ashada behind them last time sort of came there, didn't she? Sort of maybe just didn't let herself on the ground. And he was sympathetic to her. They've got her right since. I'll be very surprised if she doesn't take this out. Yeah, she's the best horse in the race, isn't she, on form, what we know so far. But I do think that Free Wind is a better horse than her in time. No doubt about that. Um, well, you mean, what, what, come the end of the year? Come the end of the year, I think that Free Wind will be rated significantly higher than Ashada. The big question mm. is whether John and Thady Goston will have Free Wind right first time out. I think it's worth taking a chance that they might, Dave. You could quite easily see them actually ending up again on Champions Day together, couldn't you? She's a horse that might end up there as well. For yeah, I would have thought that would have been the aim. Uh, the, the, she reminds me an awful lot of a horse who was trained by Gosden called Journey, who ran yeah. in the same colours. Yeah. Uh, she bolted up in a race at Newmarket at the <coughs> end of her three-year-old career by eight lengths. This horse won by seven lengths at Donny last year. Journey went on the following year to win the British champions, Phillies and Mares, which is what I think they'll be trying to do with free win. Now, Gosden has actually surpassed Sir Henry Cecil's record in this race. Sir Henry Cecil had seven winners in this race. John, John Gosden's got eight already on his own, and now he's got um, Thady with him. He's got um, free wind running. Three of those winners, of his eight winners, were all making their seasonal reappearance. So we know he can go, get them there first time out to win. I just think that she might be she might be the one to beat here, Dave. And like Pat says, I'm quite hopeful there might be a little, nice little drift here. Then Bunny come might come for a shadow and people thinking free wind, yeah. First time out, maybe she'd go at about three to one. Could be tempted by that. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I wouldn't be at all surprised we would see the flip flop and a shadow to go in fab, but she'll be carrying my money for sure. Shall we go to Isha then? <coughs> Sandown. What a big day it is there with the eclipse coming up. But we've got the distar first at three o'clock. Pat Cooney, who heads your market here? Is it a Royal Ascot winner? Yes, it is. Heredia, who overcame a lot of traffic problems to win that day. At first glance, I was thinking, yeah, I'm not really sure, though. Is the form all that compared to some of the others in the race? And on reflection, it is. It's probably even better. She's already the top rated in the race. Going to improve and improve. Five to four currently might not float too many people's boats. There's the dead eight runners as we speak. So there might be each way options. But the more you look at it, she's she was impressive at Royal Ascot. And um, I don't think this is a dramatic jump up in class. The interesting run, I think, is Grand Dame for John Gosson, who ran and but was well beaten in the Group 1 at Royal Ascot. So they think a bit of her, obviously. But Heredia, I think she's unbeaten in all her races. She's Every race is a career best from her. 
And I just think I suppose she'll win. She's not, she doesn't thrill me at five to four from a betting point of view. But uh, if your life depended on tipping a winner, I suppose you'd have to say Heredia in this one. Mm, Pat Cooney, strong on the fat then in the distal. What about yourself, <laughs> Robway? Yeah, I think that she's going to be really difficult to beat Heredia. That her time at Tascot is pretty good. The sectionals for the first two, a very good sandback was second. They came nicely clear of the rest. I was surprised earlier in the week. I think she owned around two to one. I was thinking, oh, that looks big, and it obviously does now. It wouldn't surprise me if she went off odds on. I think she is the clear form horse in the race. But there is a horse at a massive price that I think you've just got to back each way if there's eight runners in this race. Here we go. Lyrical Lady, trained by Huey Morrison. This horse is rated just 78. Now, Huey Morrison wouldn't be blowing a mark of 78. He is shrewd. He would not be blowing a mark of 78 by throwing this all straight into listed company. Yeah, you can argue he's, he's, he's hunting for a bit of black type. But look at the race last time out at Salisbury. The time of that race is really strong. It was a really quick time. And four lengths back to the second. I mean, there was 12 lengths back to the third. They, they, were, they were spread out all over the shop that day at Salisbury. And um, I, I just like the way that she went through the race at the finish. She was very, very strong through the line, lyrical lady. It obviously got <coughs> to improve significantly. I mean, Heredia is rated 106, <laughs> so she's only 78. But I just know this Huey Morrison yard. They don't mess around with types like this, throwing them in races like this. He, he could have run this in any handicap he wanted and probably won it. So, um, yeah, massive price, lyrical lady each way. That's the bet. Your wife, Sabrina, is a, is a teaching assistant, isn't she? Does she do a lot of phonics? <laughs> because you, you always say Mel Rose, Heredia. Heredia. Eldar, Elder of. You've Phon- got it nailed. Phonics is a bit of a sore subject when it comes to the wife because um, she, tries, she has to speak in an English accent. She's not English, of course. You know, when Canadian. you're trying to teach English people English, but you don't have an English accent, phonics can get quite tricky. So Part I don't broach world, that yeah. subject, Dave. All Too right, scared. Okay. <laughs> well, I could potentially say it with Queen Aminatu. There's your phonics, who is rated just four pounds higher than your lyrical lady, who I think you are tilting at windmills with a little bit there. Um, I haven't got her on top, this Queen Aminatu, <coughs> but she was desperate. Hold on, you're under- just backing all of the haggy sources. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not putting her up, but I will be. I think she's going to outrun her odds of 12 to 1 at the moment as we're filming. We're bet 365. She's joining 7. Tom the Pond, Mark Wand. What a week he's having. She was desperately unlucky not to win at Haydock last time. That form's been given some substance since. And again, they're not tilting at windmills with her, unlike you are with Lyrical Lady. Queen Amanatu. Yeah, Queen Amanatu. But I think one horse is going to give weight away here. I think it'll be a schooler. I think if there are the dead eight, she's a rock solid horse. Great. Great placing by George Bowie and the team last time up at Carlisle. The race she had to win, she blew them away. The Epsom form's very, very solid, I think. And Heredia, for me, at that price, well, I see the stiff finish. I just, I can't be getting with that at five to four. So Oscula for me, and I will have a bit on Queen Aminatu as well. Okay, let's go back to Haydock. 3.15, it's the age-old Old Newton Cup. Pat Cooney, is this the hottest favourite running anywhere this weekend? Absolutely. He has been all the rage, this fellow. And we're talking about uh, number five on the race card, the Classy Garcy, trained by William Haggis. And he's won his last four races. Just been all the rage, this horse. William Haggis, Kieran Fallon aboard, because Tom Marquand is obviously at Sandown. He's been very strongly supported in the market. With his lowest six to four, that, uh, he's bound to drift, isn't he? We, we've got pretty hefty liabilities over him. It just hasn't stopped the gamble on him. Of course, he's having winner after winner, the trainer. Got an awful lot in his favour. Progressive, the stall is quite good for him, stall number five. Going to take an awful lot of beating. But as sponsors of the meeting and sponsor this race, we tend to push the boat out. There's uh, going to be 17 runs. We're playing first five places on the race. I can't believe there isn't some terrific each-way value here. I would leave the classy Garcia at his price. You can let him win at that price. I think Get Shirty's reasonable. David O'Mara, Danny Tudhope, he's a jockey in form, isn't he? That's got a good draw. He won at Royal Ascot on fast the time before he won on soft. And horses like him are 10 to 1. I would much rather back Get Shirty each way at 10, first five, than the classy Garcia around about 6 to 4, 7 to 4. So he'd be my pick. But the each way angle is definitely the way to go here. The classy Garcy. You've been practicing <laughs> that one, Pat. I like it. We'll be, we'll be coining that one. I'm tipping all the Haggis horses, am I? Well, I'm not tipping this one to throw that back at you in your face. You thought this was a sad I did. I thought you'd definitely be honest. Look, this is uh-huh. the next Illarab, isn't it? Same colours, same race, won the same York Better handicap. Better than Illarab, isn't he? Is he? Is that why he's such a short price? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think they're rating, don't they? I mean, Kieran Fallon will be thrilled 
that Alan Kerr is running in the in the Eclipse, of course, because it means he gets the leg up instead of Tom. And he must be looking forward to this. But I, he's drawn five. He's going to go on the ground. It's probably probably going to be Ebor, is it? Yeah, he's Ebor favourite, isn't he? Yeah, it's the one. It's the one race that Haggis doesn't have at York in his locker. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's definitely to get in because he won one of those road to Ebor races last time. Uh, yeah, the problem is that race not worked out that well, has it? Falls or Autori was second. Was disappointed twice since the third. Just fine was disappointed. Yeah, it was disappointing uh, last time. Garcia, they smashed it off the boards that day at York because if it couldn't possibly get beat, and um, I thought he did very, very well to win because Forza Auto got first run on him, and I thought he's going to have to be very good to win if he come for a win, but I couldn't have him on my mind at 6-4. to four. Right, and five places here we're looking yeah, at with 365, so yeah. I agree with Pat. There were two that were on my radar. Liverpool Knight, who I just passed over for a mud-loving... Kevin Foy. Kevin... Do it, Phonics. Kevin Foy. Philip Art de Foy. Kevin Philippart Defoy. Kevin Philippart <laughs> Defoy. Kevin Foy. Uh, Kevin Foy. <laughs> who has got Ray Dawson on and is an ex Gosden horse and probably still has a bit more to offer. But do you know who's going to win this? Who? The brilliantly named, ridden by Dion LaRue. It's Richard Hughes. He's finally got some cut in the ground again. And Brentford Hope. This is, this is a great race for him. He's a horse that is really classy. He travels through it. He's in stall 18, not worried about that. They'll likely come up the centre or stand side, I think. This can be a messy race. I could just see him weaving through them, mate. No, Dave, no. Not Brentford. Dion no, LaRue no, no. will be on top. Can't have that, sorry. Not Brentford, Hope. Um, Inchicore. Who? Surely, Inchicore. <laughs> oh, That's, for Kingy. Yeah, yeah, Inchicore. Yeah. That'll win, won't it? Ugh. Last time at Goodwood, one... Well, I thought it was a decent race. I, I rated it quite low initially when I was doing our RPRs for that, and I have knocked the race up two pounds since because Dancing Harry, I think, who finished third or fourth, has come out and run two good races since. He was fifth, yeah. Next time. Um, so I have knocked that race up a little bit, and I thought Inchicore did well to come from the back and win. He's drawn out in 15. I don't know if, that, I don't know if that'll be a plus or a minus. Should be don't all right. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, I just thought with double-figure odds, he was the one. He's a right price, isn't he? All right, then Kingy and Ross Ryan will do for G in the Old Newton Cup. Uh, one of the best favourites of the weekend or one to take on? Let us know about the classy Garcy. Keep your comments <laughs> in below. The final of these big race previews. We like to go through in one big section for you now. Keep these short and snappy. But let's give this some welly. It is the Eclipse, Pat Cooney. Uh, a small field, but we've got the supplemented Derby winner. Of course, Vadini. How short is he at the moment in the market? Yeah, Vadini, he's around about six to four and has been very strong ever since Connection said they were going to throw throw the hat into the ring for this race. He continues to be well backed. Um, the one of, of the, the other ones that, that have been relatively easy to back is Bay Bridge. I think the jury's out with him, really, although it was a career best last time when he was beaten at Ascot. I think we're expecting a little bit more from him. Native Trail was easy to back during the week, but he's getting hotter now. I think he'll be uh, under three to one come the off. But it's, it's a fascinating race, and there's some top-class jockeys in the race. So the, the, the worry in the race for me was the pace, but they, they'll probably sort themselves out, I'm sure. What's going to make the running? I, I ended up thinking maybe Alan Kerr would make the running, since he is a strong running type, and he's got form over the course and distance before. And I just thought, you know, whatever horse got that uncontested lead, we saw it with State of Rest at Ascot, that is, a, that is, a, that is an advantage. And I thought, oh, I just want to be on the one that's going to make the running, and Sandan is deemed to be a front runner's track, isn't it, by a lot of people? So maybe Alan Kerr could be the value in the race. But if you just showed me the recordings of these six horses running last time out and said, which is the best horse, I'd say Vadini without a shadow of a doubt. But it um, could be one of these tactical affairs. So if that's the case, I want to be on the one in front. Yes, all right, OK. <laughs> so the supplemented French derby winner for Pat Cooney, Aga Khan, Christophe Soumillon and Jean-Claude Rouget. The French haven't won this in an absolute age, have they, since the old late Alec Head uh, took That's it, of right. course, in the 50s. Uh, El Bodegon, uh, El Bodegon, uh, uh, James Ferguson, who was on the show earlier this year, he said, don't worry about the Dante run, we'll get him back on some soft ground. He, of course, beat him last year. Was that a classic sort of two-year-old to three-year-old? This guy just looked like he was just a class apart, didn't he, in the French Derby, of course. Uh, we have modern games, the four horse going into it for Charlie Appleby, seemed to run his race. Are you with or against? I thought it was a funny race, the Prix du Jockey Club, for a start. Don't get me wrong, he was very impressive in the way that he did it, but a lot went wrong for a lot of the horses in behind. 
Um, and if you actually go back onto francegallop.com and look at the sectionals of the race, there were horses coming from miles off the pace who finished a bit quicker than Vadini. And Vadini, yes, won by five lengths, but he was always in the right spot in that race. He had the absolute run of the race in a messy race where a lot of them were inconvenienced. <laughs> the problem is, is it's difficult to weigh it up because he got the absolute run of the race, but boy, did he make the most of it. Five lengths hammered them, did he? Very, very impressive winner. Yeah. And he might well just be a superstar. I always think if it's tactical, you want to be on the fastest horse in the race, the sprinter, really. Interesting. He, he's, he could be the sprinter in the race, couldn't he? Um, what leads? Because I asked you pre-show, come on, find us the leader in the Eclipse. Because it isn't hard to see, guys, is it, out there, who's going to be held up in the race. Could it be Alan Kerr, like Pat says? It could be, couldn't it? The, this was my, my worry about the Prince of Wales' stakes, and it was... People were saying who's going to lead in the Prince of Wales' stakes. Nobody oh, knew. God, State of rest, one off in front, got the easy lead and won. Um, I'll be surprised if um, if the staying type horses allow this to turn into a sprint. I mean, if if they're if they're going to go out and hold Baybridge up, they might uh, uh, in a slowly run race. They might as well not bother, you know, because he, he isn't going to win a sprint up the straight at Sandown. He needs them to go fast. Maybe they should jump off in front with. Did they Bay go Bridge. that fast in the in the Brigadier Gerald? Uh, they went. They went a good pace. Yeah, the time was pretty solid, um, and he finished off his race very strongly. Uh, if, if you're on a stay at Alan Kerr, you probably want to be up with the pace. If you've got, if you're on the speed horses, Native Trail, Verdini horses who look fast, you probably don't mind it turning into a bit of a sprint. So it's an absolutely cracking race, fascinating from a tactical perspective. Is it a real betting race? Not for me. It's tricky, it's isn't it? It's a very tricky race. The one I don't fancy, Native Trail. I've been saying it all season. I don't think he's that good. Mm. I was not impressed with, with what he did at the Curra. I thought he was very disappointing at the Curra. Uh, I thought he, sh he was disappointing in the Guineas. I, I expected him to win that easily. He didn't win it. I don't think the Guineas form is that strong, as I've been saying all season. I thought Caribus was lucky to win the St James's Palace. The horse in fourth would have beaten him, wouldn't he? Midra or whatever. Is that what he was called? Something like that. Magical. Imagine, yeah, one well, of those. I can't, yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, the haggis sauce. Yeah, you yeah. should know it, though. Come you on, Pat, that. you're there with the keyboard. You should be yeah. getting involved here. Are, are we missing a trick, though? Are we just are we just missing a trick? Because he's the best horse in the world, not running in this race. You mean Mishriff? And he's like, he's a massive price. He came back last year, if you remember, behind St Mark's Basilica with a Dave in the race, and he he looked like he was going to win, and he got kind of outspeeded, didn't he? My worry about him here is that he probably is looking all towards the international. I'm not saying he won't be ready to win. Great prize to win, he could be. Um, but I don't know. He's got a bit more to prove. And the fact that he's this price shows you what sort of race it is. Lord North, the outsider, has a top race of both rating of 126. This is a serious race, isn't it? It's a serious race, but he's better than them all. I mean, they're on his best form. He's the best horse in this race. So look, go back to last season's um, uh, international stakes at York and watch it again. The horse in second, well, there's fresh air in second, but the horse in behind the fresh air in second is called Alan Kerr, who's a shorter price than him for some reason, got no idea why. The horse in third is Mostadaf, who Bay Bridge yeah. beat at Sandown. So on collateral lines of form, he's, he's already got the beating of Alan Kerr and Bay Bridge. I'm sure he's better than Native Trail. It's just whether Verdini's in a class of his own or not. He's got to give Native Trail quite a bit of weight, obviously. He's got to give him £10. Yeah, um, that's a lot. But that, that's um, that's wait for age, isn't it? And, it, uh, it yeah, yeah I know. we can we can we can we can debate that one. But uh, it's not I like think, wait for sex. Is I think it? we wait agree that, that that it is you know fair. I just think the native trial has been waiting to go up to this trip, and from stall five, I think that last year's champion two year old will be on top for me. I've got him and Baybridge. I don't like Vidini at the price. Uh, I see it, but I want to see him back it up, like a lot of people do out there. Alan Kerr, I really like him. He keeps pulling it out. The Tats Gold Cup form is there, but State of Rest wasn't the State of Rest we saw at Ascot there. Mishriff, I think, probably will just need it. Uh, and Lord North, I think, he's probably had his day in the sun. Baybridge, every time we mention that name, I feel like I'm being stung because of what happened in the Prince of Wales Estates, but arguably <coughs> he did all right to finish there. I would have, I, I really want to see him back on some softer ground. Yeah. There is rain forecast, but I don't think he's going to come in time. No. But he's stall two, and maybe going back to Sandown. He's drifting out a bit. I will be backing him and I will be backing Native Trail. I don't think Braybridge wants it rattling quick. 
Yeah, he he, he's all right on good ground. Though. So Michael said it's not a problem for him, but I think the form book tells us, and he's a new bay, they pound yeah. the ground a bit. Well, he's by a multiplex mare. You know, multiplexes tend to like soft ground as well. So the, he, when he gets on soft ground, he's going to be really good. And it'll bring his stamina into yeah, play, Yeah, I think the champion stakes might be his race for the taking later on. But I've got to go back in. The amount of times you you put your faith in a horse and then you jump off them. I've seen it so many times. I will be back in the two of them. But we disagree on Native Trail. I thought the horse that was second to him in the uh, Irish Guineas New Energy Sheila Lavery horse, who everyone was a bit like that's an elephant in the room on the form. I thought he ran really well in the St James's Palace. He was last off the bridle. You're wrong, man. Yeah, but the St James's Palace was a poor race, Dave. Look, but it is three year olds, and I think they're going to. This is going to be St Mark's Basilica. I've got if, him on if, top. The, if the three year olds win this race, it will be Vadini. It won't be Native Trail. This argument will rage on as the weekend <laughs> goes on. Who's arguing about it amongst yourselves out there? The Eclipse winner. It's a tricky puzzle, but what a race it is. Who wins? Let us know. It's that all important weekend winner time. The Naps on Eclipse weekend. And I'm going to start off the card with a winner in the 150, the Charge. And I'm going to go for Mick Bahi. Nothing Roger Varian did in our chat earlier. Put me off him from stall one. Yes, he'll need a gap, but he will get it. He's an absolute good thing if he gets that gap in the cold charge. Five furlong burn up. Native trail for you? <laughs> no, unsurprisingly, Dave. Yeah, 225 at Sandown. The challenge, uh, I like Uzo. Do you? Uh, yeah. To Backed pour him it last on. time. Yeah. Backed him last <laughs> time. He, he finished last or second last in the uh, race at Royal Ascot. The, uh, a terrible run, wasn't it? I don't think it was the Hunt Cup. It was like one of those mile handicaps they have on the straight course. There's quite a few of them now. Buckingham Dave, Palace. Yeah, he was disappointed. But um, he did this last season. Like He had a big reappearance and he was disappointed second time out. Then he bounced back on his next run. Now, first time out, which is his debut Sam, for Osborne, and uh, Safi Osborne was riding. He finished second to Rebel Territories, and the front two came miles clear in a really good time, and he finished stronger than the winner. He ran the fast, a really fast final three furlongs that day. So, yeah, uh, if he comes back to that form, Uzo in the 2.25 at Sandown. Your phonics really helped you out there as well. Thanks. I'm seeing how you're doing, <laughs> I'm, I'm in awe, really. Pat Cooney, complete the treble. Yes, uh, well, I'll be at Haydock, so only prudent, really, to have a look at the Haydock races. 4.25 for me. Young Fire, David O'Mara, Danny Tudho. Not a horse who wins that often, but he did everything but win on his seasonal reappearance. He only went up a pound for that run. He's a course and distance winner at Haydock, so he likes it there. And he also likes softish ground as well. So he's got an awful lot in his favour, and I think it'll be a reasonable price for me. So Young Fire and Danny Tudho, informed jockey aboard. Can't do much wrong than that. There are your weekend naps. Well, Sally, that's all we've got time for on this weekend's What A Shout. A thanks to Roger Varian for coming on. A thanks to you for watching. A thanks to Graham Robway for coming back in. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, been great to be back. Can't wait for Saturday. It's going to be a fantastic day's racing. Feet up, just take it all in. Yeah, I'll be taking it all in. Yeah, I won't be going to sand down. I'll be playing it nice and cool at home. OK, and I shall WhatsApp you the moment Nature Trail gets mm -hmm. past the post in front. I look forward to that, Dave. Yeah, it's coming your way at 3.37. Uh, Pat Cooney, brilliant to have you with us. What does the weekend old Haydock, I'm assuming? Yes, uh, we sponsor all seven races at Haydock and uh, always a fun place to be. So come up and say hello to me. Yeah, and the July Festival coming up next week as well. Great sponsorship for Bet365 there as well. OK, great stuff, guys. Don't forget to gamble responsibly this weekend. That's our MO here at the Racing Post and Bet365 as well. Don't forget to download the free must-have Racing Post app. You can do that on the App Store or the Google Play Store. There's loads of sport out there at the moment. Wimbledon, you name it. Enjoy it. <laughs>